Tendering for work on Molinier land slippage soon to begin. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Tuesday, November 16, 2021, I am Chrisanne Mitchell. Tendering for suitably qualified contractors to execute work on the Moliné land slippage will commence in December 2021. That information was shared by Minister for Infrastructure Development, Senator Nolan Cox, during Tuesday's post-Cabinet press briefing. The project, which will see the upgrade of 26 kilometers of road, construction of new bridges, box and slipper drains, along with road stabilization, is expected to commence in the first quarter of 2022 and should be complete by December 2023. Senator Cox says the project will be divided into five packages, with package C that includes the Molinier land slippage area being given top priority. He says government is working with grant funding agency United Kingdom Infrastructure Partnership Fund and the Caribbean Development Bank for the release of funds to ensure the commencement of work on the Molinier land slippage in early 2022. The land slippage in Molinier started in December 2019 and with progressive movement of the land, a section of the road was lost along with dwelling homes. The road was eventually closed and a detour created through the community of Mount Morris. That we believe it's, it, there is significant benefits in doing that, meaning that more than one contractors would be engaged, and meaning that the work will move faster than if we just um, um, employ only one contractor. So that is the approach that we'll be, we'll be taking. That those work, we see those packages, we, we are very hopeful that those packages between April uh, 2022 um, to December of 2023, when the entire corridor would be completed. So we are targeting 20 December 2023 as final completion for the entire Western Corridor, inclusive of Molinier. That is what we, we are looking at, we are working towards. Documents have already been received from the Beston Consulting Firm to allow for pre-qualification of contractors to avoid any further delay to the start of the project. Currently, while the designs are being finalized and the, the bill of quantities for tender for Molinier in proper, we are hoping to have tendering of Molinier in December of this year. So we have some, some important deadlines that we are working towards. Um, what we are doing right now is a pre-qualification process for contractors. So we are pre-qualifying contractors and that will be done within the next two weeks. That will be available for contractors who, are, who meet those requirements. So the pre-qualification process will take place within the next two weeks. There are some key uh, criteria that we will want persons to meet in order to be able to, to bid for work on this important project. Senator Cox also gave a review on what has been achieved thus far as it relates to having all the relevant areas covered for the smooth execution of the entire Western Road project. All land surveys and, and traffic conks um, that, that have been completed. Um, surveying of bridges to be built, culverts that have been completed. Identification of all the land slips and rock fall areas, those areas that pose uh, that, that threat of, of slide um, that has already been completed. A measurement of the road roughness and condition that has already been completed. The geotechnical investigation and topographical surveys. Um, um, and also just recently, this during this uh, past couple of weeks, um, they have been doing stakeholder consultations, um, which would have spanned from various parishes from St. John, St. Max, and St. George consultations, which took place between the 9th and 11th of November of, of this month, 2021. A team of professionals from Beston Consulting Firm has concluded a series of public consultations with residents from St. George Northwest, St. John, and St. Mark, who will be impacted once work commences on the Western Main Road corridor in 2022. 
Project team leader Mandish Singh told the residents that the work, which will be divided into five packages, will involve significant upgrade to the existing 26 kilometers of road from the National Stadium in St. George's to Waltham in St. Mark. What we're doing is we're prioritizing the Monalier landslip. So already we have the concept designs for the Monalier, Monalier landslip um, completed. We are now looking at the costings of it and the various pros and cons of the concepts that we've come up with. But the idea is that we get um, contractors on the ground in the first quarter of next year. So between, say, I would say February and March, you should see um, construction activity at one near um, landslip. Um, progressing on from there, we will have uh, packages of work, as Kishan has alluded to. We've um, split the project into various packages and um, getting tenders for those out early next year so that we can get construction started probably um, around about April onwards um, for the other packages. We are looking to get the entire road completed by the end of 2023, which means there'll be multiple packages of work and multiple contractors. Um, it's not gonna be just one big contractor starting from one end and working their way along. It'll just take too long if we take that approach. So that's the um, construction strategy. Civil engineer Kishan Ramkisun gave a visual presentation as to the scope of work to be carried out. Ramkisun says climate change is one of the main mitigating factors in coming up with the right designs to execute the project. We're also looking at the construction of drainage features on both sides of the road um, to prevent, firstly, um, to capture all runoff all rainwater um, runoff and also to prevent the road from eroding. Um, we're also looking at repairing and replacing all the lapidated and undersized culverts. We're also doing, also proposing channel protection works for rivers and streams in terms of placing material so that the foundations of those structures will not be eroded. We're also looking at vegetation maintenance so that during storms or whatever the case may be um, in terms of rock or so, um, you won't have that blocking of the roadway in the future. And we're also looking at doing construction of short retaining walls for minor land surfaces. The team's environment engineer, Alison King, shared on her role in the execution of the project and how they will work towards ensuring minimal discomfort to residents. From an environmental perspective, I am looking at the environmental services that exist along that road. How do you use the forest? How do you use the rivers, the marine space adjacent to the, the road? Um, what concerns you may have in relation to those services uh, and how you would recommend that we, we mitigate those possible impacts. Uh, there may be locations where natural hazards may be of concern to you. There may be areas that are prone to flooding. You want to make sure that, that those types of issues uh, are properly managed through the design so that they, they, they no longer are an issue when the new road is put into operation. So those kinds of things. Residents were told that they will have to make certain adjustments once the project commences as unavoidably there will be increased dust, noise and traffic delays. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. Let's get tough on greed, yeah, larceny. It will destroy our economy. Larceny threatens our food security. Can hurt us locally, hurt us globally. To all the buyers, ask for license from all produce sellers. To all the people, call 300 for police for them keeping fellas. To all the farmers, don't steal produce from your brother. Then you're selling to traffickers, hotels, and street vendors. Nah, man. Let's do all we can to stop radio larceny. New vigilance, new laws, and a tough judiciary. Stop Grenada's organized business crime. It's time. To report radio larceny, call 300. The Ministry of Health has adjusted the entry requirements for non-nationals, which became effective Monday, November 15th. Non-nationals will not be allowed to enter the island unless they are fully vaccinated. 
Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sean Charles outlined the changes during the government's weekly post-Cabinet press briefing. While unvaccinated citizens are allowed, they must be quarantined at a facility for a seven-day period with a PCR test to be done on the fifth day. Quarantine is not required for fully vaccinated citizens once the results of a rapid test done upon arrival returns negative. For persons who are traveling right now, just ensure that you have your proof of vaccination, your PCR test, because the PCR test within 72 hours of travel is required. All right. Um, just ensure um, that you have these and you know, to travel into Grenada. So, I mean, these are basically the changes that were um, recently made. Data from the COVID-19 dashboard for the past few weeks show a steady low positivity rate. The chief medical officer is pleased with the low positivity level. However, he says Grenada is still a long way from its target to start getting comfortable. Where we're at right now is a positive place. Um, we can only hope that um, we continue to receive the cooperation of the public so that we can continue to, to be like this uh, all the way through Christmas and beyond, all right? I know that we are all um, eager for some um, semblance of, of normalcy, even as this disease continues to rage across the world. To date, 35.59% of the target population, ages 12 and over, are fully vaccinated. Government is installing coastline boulders as a temporary response measure at the Mount Rodney, Mount Craven area in St. Patrick. Infrastructure Development Minister Honorable Nolan Cox says following extensive investigations on the coastal erosion, which has impacted several households, government has decided to implement a temporary fix until construction designs for a permanent solution are available. Minister Cox disclosed the response plans during the government's weekly post-cabinet media briefing on Tuesday. Residents and businesses in the vicinity on the beachfront had been affected by rough water and coastline deterioration prior to the multi-million dollar breakwater project. Over 40 residents from 12 households have been given financial and other assistance from government and four of the households were relocated. Senator Cox says work on the project started last week. Uh, the government of Grenada did respond and provided financial support to persons who had to relocate. I think it is some of $25,000 for each household who had to be relocated. Uh, thus far, four households were relocated and two, two more are in the process of being relocated. What we would have done and started as recent as last week uh, we have been doing some temporary response measure. Uh, so we have engaged uh, a, a contractor to do some temporary uh, response work on the coastline, um, putting in some, some boulders to reduce the, the impact that is happening currently for that is affecting some of the permanent homes that are there. So that is the, the current response that we have while we wait for a more permanent uh, fix once those, those construction designs are completed. That story has ended the national report for today, Tuesday, November 16, 2021. Recapping the top story, tendering for work on Molinaire land slippage soon to begin. On behalf of the entire news and production team here at the Government Information Service, I am Chris and Mitchell saying thank you for joining us. Until next time.